Hello and uh, welcome back to episode three of um, the Back to the Start of It All series. As I'm working on a couple of projects, um, I thought it'd be uh, perfect to kind of put together a bit of a how-to video and uh, answer a few questions um, which have been asked recently um, in relation to weathering and uh, what happens if you make a mistake and it goes horribly wrong. So what I'm going to do, um, just to answer a few questions uh, that have been asked, is uh, obviously if someone's either bought a model which has been already weathered by either factory finish or um, someone who's had a go at themselves or maybe yourself you've had a go at it and uh, and got it all horribly wrong can you undo it and the uh, answer to that is yes you can uh, so what I'm going to do is um, show you uh, the projects that I've got on the go at the moment um, which is the Hornby class 50 and um, I've chosen this particular model as I like the dark shade of blue but um, as Hornby took the option to weather them, um, and in my opinion, weather them quite badly, um, I want to um, go to the lengths of removing all of the factory weathering, as well as the uh, nameplate and uh, numbers itself. So the first project that I'm doing is um, 50045. Um, which was uh, Hornby's weathered edition and um, I must admit that the weathering that they applied to uh, these locomotives uh, left little to be desired uh, there was nothing nice about any of it and um, I want to basically rename and renumber this particular locomotive so looking into the uh, new Hornby um, 5033 Glorious, uh, the new release that's just been that's just come out. Basically, I've chosen not to actually um, use that particular model as um, it does not quite fit within the time period um, on the layout itself. As the uh, loco itself was actually um, withheld for special runnings and special tours at the end of their uh, career, 5033 was actually repainted into. Um, the dark blue network southeast livery um, and of course the Hornby one is actually in a lighter shade of blue it also lost its um, British Rail um, emblem at the side uh, just to the left of the nameplate as well amongst uh, various other small changes that uh, took place on the loco just to freshen it up so with that in mind I've decided to um, just use an old uh, 5045 weathered edition and um, a lot of time spent on just removing all the horrid factory weathering uh, to bring that uh, pristine blue finish um, back to a nice condition again and uh, I think the uh, results of that kind of really have paid off so I'm kind of pleased that I, I did that rather than purchase um, what could potentially have been the wrong shade of blue So as you can see here, um, the model itself has um, had all of its undesirable factory weathering removed and I've also at the same time removed um, the uh, 5045 numbering and replaced them with 5033 and uh, given her some new nameplates as well. Obviously the model's not quite finished, there's still a bit of work left to do to it but uh, you can see the difference already by just looking at the, um, the box how much of a difference that looks by just removing that horrid factory weathering. So this brings me on to the second project which is uh, this mainline Backman class 45 um, which is purchased relatively cheap off of eBay as it's got some kind of uh, weathering attempt done to it. Uh, it's not bad, um, I've seen worse. Uh, but I want to work this one so I can actually strip the weathering off of this and then um, most likely probably scrap weather it to some degree but a lot lighter on the finish than obviously all the dark muck and stuff that's been done on this. 
Okay, so I've removed the body shell from the chassis and uh, if you're going to be doing this on any model that has delicate detail, make sure you remove anything, including the glazing and uh, having a close look up of it. The weathering isn't great actually. Uh, there's quite a lot of splodges of paint in various places, so I'll show you now how I'm going to remove all this and try and restore it back to its uh, kind of almost factory uh, finish. Okay, so for removing all weathering and uh, decals or anything like that, I'm just going to use some good old teacup. You'll also need a few cotton buds and as well as that, um, an old beaten up brush that you don't particularly care about anymore. So that's basically all you need. Now I've got absolutely no idea uh, what the actual paint was ever used on this um, locomotive so what I aim to do with the tea cut is to work this in and to break through the layers of paint that's been applied on here. Unless you're specifically wanting to remove any numbers or name plates or anything like that, um, it's always advisable to make sure you go a little bit lighter around these as this stuff will remove absolutely everything eventually. So What I'm going to do is I'm going to wash that down and uh, with some warm soapy water and just see how much of an effect that that's made. So that's removed a fair amount of uh, the first layers. I'm just going to continue now and um, go over the whole of the lot, um, including the roof, and get as much of this off as I possibly can. And then I'll come back and show you basically the end results. Okay, so that's uh, probably taken me about 10 minutes just to get down to these sort of tones uh, to how it is now. Um, compare the yellow front end at that end to obviously at that end. That comes off fairly easy. Um, now I'm probably going to leave the model around about sort of up to this sort of standard as, um, as I'm going to re-weather it anyway. Um, I just wanted to expose more of the blue um, as I want to fade that down and uh, it would have been impossible to fade that down with the dark shades of weathering on it anyway. Um, this also brings up an effect of um, of a locomotive. I mean this, this could actually look potentially okay as it is uh, with the weathering sort of stripped to a degree like you know on the roof uh, which shows the um, loco has been heavily used uh, covered in thick grime and put through a loco wash and um, obviously all the the details around various things like grills, um, the grime sort of tends to stick in those areas and uh, that's typically seen on a lot of locomotives. So that gives you an idea of basically how to strip weathering um, if you've either done it yourself and um, want to remove it and start again then obviously tea cuts the best thing. Or uh, if you've, let's just say you've um, acquired a factory weathered model like the Hornby 50 and um, don't particularly like the weathering it's um, easy enough to remove uh, but as always just be careful of your your decals uh, nameplates and stuff like that on various models 
you know, unless you're uh, going to go down the lines of renumbering. So in terms of typical sort of time scale spent on doing these uh, models, um, with this video of what I've just done on this one, um, took me about sort of 15 minutes um, to get it down to this sort of level. Um, I could have gone a bit further on it and probably removed most of it, um, but chose not to. Uh, the Hornby 50, obviously, as I wanted that as clean as I could possibly get it, um, I spent something in a region of probably the best part of an hour and a half on that model, uh, getting into all the bits of tricky detail like the grills, the vents, the shut lines, as best as I can. Um, there is still some degree of the uh, factory weathering noticeable in a few places, but um, it's perfectly fine. Um, it does show that the locomotives had a bit of use rather than just being fresh from the paint shop and uh, hasn't been used at all. So key factor to it is just to spend a lot of time, keep on working at it, uh, keep on washing off and uh, until you've got it down to a decent finish. Hopefully you've um, got something from that and um, if you've got any questions or queries or anything in those sort of lines just drop us a message in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer whatever I can. So that concludes this episode and um, obviously there'll be more um, in the future. Um, got various uh, ideas in my head of um, different styles of weathering and stuff like that all in the pipeline uh, sort of as I go. They'll uh, be posted up as and when. So anyway, we'll leave that here and uh, again, thanks for watching.